You're gonna hate it, it's gonna suck while you learn it, but in the end, you're gonna be like, yeah, whatever, it's the best and most complete editing software or whatever on that. There's this ongoing argument about which is better, DaVinci Resolve or Premiere Pro. Some argue that DaVinci is the best, while others argue that Adobe has more features. Today, I will settle this argument and declare that the winner is... CapCut at least for the average content creator. And if you're watching this right now, that is probably you. And how do I know that? Oh, sweetie, that's how averages work. Bless your soul. I'm gonna explain why you should use CapCut. I mean, you don't have to, I don't care. But first, let's take a look at the other two. DaVinci Resolve is the best and most complex editing software if you are a beginner who wants to learn editing for another passion, like for your business or proving to your parents that you're not a failure. This is a great choice to avoid. But if you are a beginner who wants to learn editing because you think you'll enjoy editing, this app will make you hate editing. However, once you master it, it becomes a superpower and you're gonna love it. With DaVinci, you'll not only learn how to edit, but also how to color grade, create visual effects and design sounds at a Hollywood level. DaVinci is the industry standard and it is Free. Here's what you can do with DaVinci. If you want to be an advanced editor, these are exciting for you. But for everyone else, it's useful to know what DaVinci Resolve can do because if you get to the point where you can afford to hire an editor, so you don't have to do it yourself, the person you're gonna hire is probably going to be using DaVinci. So it might be a good idea to have an overview of what it looks like and what it can do so that you know what to ask for. So quickly, here are the five features that I like the best about DaVinci Resolve. Number one, it's free. There's also a paid version that that offers great value. I use the free version professionally for years on videos, on broadcast TV, so you don't actually need the paid version for good results. Right now, as I'm shooting this video, unlocking the features of DaVinci Resolve costs around $300. You pay once and you get it forever with all the updates. That's cool. Once you're familiar with DaVinci, you can work really quickly. The proxy system is easy to use, so you can work fast even with limited processing power. Check out this video if you don't know what a proxy is. DaVinci is organized in pages. You've got the VFX page, the audio page, the color grading page, more on those in a bit. The editing page is where you can work on any type of editing project. But if you want to quickly cut a video without all the extra features, there's the cut page. It's like a light version within the same app. That's quite efficient. VFX and audio. <laughs> In DaVinci, these are called Fusion and Fairlight. Fusion used to be its own software until Blackmagic bought it and integrated it into DaVinci. It is a visual effects compositing software like Adobe After Effects. A compositing software is one that is used to create and integrate visual effects into filmed footage. I'll be honest, I haven't used Fairlight that much because I don't do a lot of sound design, but it's basically a full audio editing software within DaVinci Resolve. You can even record and mix music, and it it's included, so it's free. And the most awesome feature of DaVinci Resolve for me is also the most visible one, color grading. And that's actually what DaVinci Resolve is at its core, the most powerful color grading software. 90% of what you see in Hollywood is done in DaVinci Resolve. The teal and orange look, the film look, the Netflix look, it's all done here. You have 100% flexibility and best of all, AI. The DaVinci AI tracker is the best in the world and also the fastest and it's really accurate. It's just it just makes me so horny. One very important thing to know about DaVinci is that it is stable. And when I mean stable, I mean it will not crash. It will not freeze. It will render videos fast. And it's actually the fastest renderer out there. In 10 years, I've had maybe two render errors. And speaking of render errors, let's talk about Adobe Premiere. Adobe Premiere is like that person who says awful things, is always mean to you, who doesn't want you to succeed, and you just wanna... Punch him. But like, you can't do it, cause obviously... Mom's gonna get mad cause he's your brother or whatever. It's basically an abusive relationship where you can't leave cause there's no way you could take the kids with you. Too dark? What? Before I go into how much Adobe Premiere has hurt me on a personal level, let's talk about the good part. Adobe has created an ecosystem of software that works together. Kind of similar to DaVinci Resolve. However, the difference is that each app is its own separate thing. So to get the best out of this ecosystem, you need to learn Photoshop and After Effects, which is quite a lot, but even knowing the basics gives you so much flexibility as an editor. Starting out is much easier than DaVinci Resolve because there is a smaller learning curve. The interface is customizable, basic editing is straightforward and can be learned in a day or two. Recent updates have added AI tools such as text-based editing, which I kind of like because it 
makes editing a little bit faster. Another AI tool, one that I literally use every day is the Adobe Speech Enhancer. I have a video on how to use it to enhance your audio online for free right here. I believe this tool is a game changer because it eliminates the need for an expensive microphone. It makes a cheap mic sound like studio quality with just the click of a button. Just one button. Okay, maybe like two clicks. Premiere also has this automatic tone mapping. This means that no matter what camera you use, even an iPhone, your videos will look the best they possibly can while importing into Premiere without doing anything extra. You no longer need conversion LUTs. If you don't know what a LUT is, check out this video. You know when a camera shoots really low contrast images and it's kind of desaturated and doesn't look that great, but you know it can look better? Well, this is the tool that does that. It makes it look better right when you import it into Premiere. One other thing that I like is that you can create templates for social media. You can also export and publish directly to social media. And this cuts out having to deal with file types and formats. You know, DaVinci can do all of that too. But when it comes to this particular feature, CapCut actually does it much better than these two. We'll talk about that in a minute. Premiere also has the Adobe Dynamic Link, which means that you can have Photoshop or After Effects files in your Premiere timeline as clips, which you can open up in each individual software and edit without having to export the clips, edit them and bring them back. And this saves a lot of time, but it's totally useless if you don't know how to use Photoshop and After Effects. And that kind of adds to the learning curve of the ecosystem, but it's totally worth it if you learn it. The biggest con of Premiere is that it is slow. Although recent updates have greatly improved performance, when it comes to render speed and timeline reactivity, it still lags behind Da Vinci, pun intended. It also crashes. Like I've had moments when I've literally cried. This one time I spent like 20 hours rendering a music video because it kept crashing. I barely got it out of time. I had to put it on a USB stick and drive to the TV studio and give it to the production team like 30 minutes before the video was about to have like its live premiere on the morning talk show. And that was a nightmare, but it was worth it because it was my big break. Check it out here. With all that being said, I do use Premiere Pro for 80% of my editing because I work in teams and it has quite a good online collaborative feature. Also, so I do a lot of Photoshop and After Effects, which tie directly into Premiere. So yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of stuck. Kind of stuck here. The main reason though, that I don't have any plans to leave the Adobe ecosystem is the fact that they have probably the only useful AI image generation capabilities on the market. I rarely need a picture of a dog dressed as Gandalf supervising an exam at the K9 Academy saying you shall pass, but I do often need to replace a label, add a chair, clean up a wall, ETC, and Adobe's image generation has that and it's getting better by the day and it's already included in my monthly subscription. And they are really Really leaning into the AI aspect of content creation. Like they have an integration with Autopod, which is an AI that takes an hour long podcast and edits it for you, makes all the cuts. It is insane to just watch it like snip, snip, snip. So yeah, I'm sticking with Premiere because I feel that the AI features moving forward are gonna save loads and loads of time. Now that we've put things into context, what's the one thing that CapCut has that the other two don't? Less, it has less, it is not overwhelming. Most people who shoot content just want to edit out the beginning and the end and cut out pauses and mistakes, add captions and maybe adjust the contrast and brightness a bit and like export with just one click. And that's exactly what CapCut does. So it's great for a beginner because it has no bells and whistles, but it's also great for an advanced editor because it has no bells and whistles. What it has instead is caption templates, stickers, layer effects, drag and drop transitions that you don't really have to think about. It's basically one step up from the TikTok video editor. So if you're an advanced editor, knowing these features are there will save you loads of time. Everything you can do on CapCut can be done in Premiere and Resolve and in a more customizable manner. But that level of customization takes a lot more time and time is valuable. So if CapCut saves the most time, then that's the most value. I use CapCut for all my short form content that goes out on social media because even the very process of starting a project is like 10 times faster than in Premiere or DaVinci. And I can also do it on my phone. And that's the great thing about CapCut. If you're a beginner, you can start on your phone. And when you feel you need to have a little bit more control over the edit, you can level up and use CapCut PC or Mac. And when you master that, you can choose one of the other editors based on how big of a role editing is in your workflow or business. Apart from all the basics that you can do with CapCut, here are five features that make me use CapCut for certain projects. One, auto captions. Premiere can also do auto captions, but with CapCut in five 
clicks or five taps, you can get your video captioned and choose a style which looks great. Two, thumbnail editing. I actually just found out about this. At the beginning of your track, you have a thumbnail editor. In the past, I would export a frame and then make like a thumbnail in another software like Photoshop. But CapCut lets you choose a thumbnail, lets you customize it with text and all that, and it makes it the first frame of your video automatically in case the platform where you're posting on doesn't let you choose a thumbnail manually. Three, camera. You can shoot a video directly from inside CapCut, which is pretty basic, except you have a prompter. And prompter apps cost like a hundred dollars per year, like a hundred euros. So this is basically for free. So you can write your script and read it and have it not seem like you're reading. CapCut also has an AI script writer. This is really cool because you just pick your topic and add some points you want to talk about. And CapCut creates different versions of scripts, which you can modify and customize to suit your voice. And this is perfect if you have an idea, but need a little bit of help starting out, but I would not use it 100%. I would, you know, put things in my own voice. Number four, skin retouching. I am still, till this day, shocked, 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 shocked. I am shocked, shocked that I can't do a basic skin smoothing in Premiere. Shocked. You can do this in Instagram. You can do skin smoothening in CapCut. And if you pay, you get extra controls and features. Now, I don't use it because my skin is perfect covered in a thick layer of foundation. Hey, I am a drag queen. I have makeup everywhere and I am not afraid to use it. Five, green screen effects. Now, removing backgrounds and doing those cool effects where text goes behind you, those are amazingly easy to do on CapCut. Six, templates. You know those videos on social media with many pictures which are animated and move in time and with a beat and like in rhythm and they look like they took a lot of work to create? Well, most people don't do that edit themselves. They just pick a template from within CapCut. CapCut. They just pick a template from within CapCut add their images and CapCut does the last and CapCut does the rest for you. So yeah, CapCut is awesome and they are constantly releasing new features. And usually features are free for a while. So even if you aren't paying, you get the benefits at least temporarily. And if you do decide to pay, it's like 10 euros, $10. So that's basically one lunch, depending on your, where you're living. Here in Berlin, that's like half a lunch. Jesus, you can't, you can't have a meal with less than 20 euros. Well, you can, but I don't want to. My final take on these three different apps is that a newbie who wants to become advanced in video editing and color grading should pick DaVinci Resolve. A newbie who wants to be advanced both in video and graphics and VFX should choose the Adobe ecosystem. And the average creator who just wants to do basic content for their brand should start with CapCut and stick with it until they feel they want to do bigger things things, or at least until they are successful enough to pay someone else to edit. In which case, it's good to actually know how to edit and the meaning of words like proxy and LUTs and other technical stuff, which I have explained in this video. So go watch that.